Morning, y'all. Early start. Heading off for Torquay Golf Club. It's a bit of a cold, windy one at Torquay. So I want to talk about ball position. And I want you to start thinking of ball position as being a much more dynamic thing that you're allowed to learn your patterns from. And let's try and get away from the idea. The ball position is just basically, there's a right and a wrong. You know, there's, I must have the ball in this position with this club. Now there's an element of that, but it's very player specific. But look, let's start with the fundamentals, what people would call basics. So I would say the playing ground, if you like, for me, for ball position and fundamentals, is between these two spots. So back of the ball bit I'm gonna hit lining up the middle of my feet, wedges, nine irons, any club with loft. As soon as I start dropping in loft, which then in theory, I feel like I won't get enough height, then I start moving to that second position. So I start edging that ball forwards. So something like my hybrids, I'm gonna put certainly my low hybrid 19 degrees a little bit further forward, ending up with my driver, back of the ball just on the inside of my heel, those kind of ideas. This is my fundamental playing ground. This is what you like to all see and say, right, I play my seven iron from there, and I like to play my driver from there. Those kind of black and white, kind of YouTube dream, kind of like, oh, I've now got the answer off, I go, and then I'll be back tomorrow because it probably won't work as well as I thought it could. But I want you to start thinking of ball position as a much more dynamic thing. Because ball position on its own actually doesn't do anything. You've got to do things as well. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to hit my standard seven iron, that ball opposite the middle of my foot, so the bit I'm going to hit, normal shot. I'm six down. I'm launching at 19 degrees of uh, 19 degree launch angle. It's a relatively straight shot, slight push, path at zero, face slightly open, which is where the push came from. Peaked height at 28, little low. Gonna do one more, same position. So now five down, launching at 30 degrees, peaking height around 30, launching at 20. That's more my normal number. I'm now gonna put the ball opposite my toes of my left foot. So way too far forward. Still trying to hit target, still trying to deliver functional numbers. So I'm 4.5 down, it's gone no higher, 30 yards height, same height, spinning around the same amount, all going in the same distance, launching at 21, so it is the highest launch, but it's up there with one of the highest strikes that I hit. It's kind of in there from how far forward I put that ball. One more, this time I'm gonna put it right off my back foot. All kind of around target, all similar distances. So this one's now launching, it's 28 peak height, the same as my first one, only two yards difference, it's 19.2. It's not my lowest launch, should be, ball way back. And an angle of attack, six, five, four, and four, so stabilizing from five, four, and four. But massively different ball positions. So think about how that works for an individual. The next thing that will happen is if I move the ball forward or back, my path start to change, which means my shape of shots might start to change. I need to know what my skill set is with different lofts in situation. When it comes to playing from this playing area, so literally back foot, the front foot, with the middle and plenty of stops in between with different clubs. So trying to think of your ball position being a dynamic part of your game, something that changes in the many situations you're gonna find yourself in, is actually the far bigger skill that I work with my students than rather than just trying to learn what is the correct ball position with each club. That's an element of it, and you saw how little time I spent on that at the start. It's basic, it applies in one situation really, when it's just everything's kind of set up perfect. When you get out there, well let's see, post comments down below, guess why I would move that ball position around, what situation, what shots, what lies, what would be making me move that ball position around? Post in that comment section down below, let me know. Let's get out on the course and show you. Let's redo some situation shots. Right, 151 yards. Down and off the left wind. One fluffy lie, feels very friendly, very nice. One very bare Lynx style lie. So the Lynx bare lie, I could play it from a standard ball position, but I'm gonna knock the ball slightly back in my start. 
make myself feel like the ball's like. So basically, if it was here, I've moved it maybe two ball, two balls back. I know from my testing that my club path tends to go a little bit to the right. That give me a little bit of a draw. Winds off the left, so I'm actually going to hit this straight. That little offset in wind and shape through club path through changing that ball position for me will balance themselves out. But remember, if I do that test that I did indoors, ball position isn't doing that alone. It's the fact that I've got the ball slightly back weight forward as I swing I keep that weight forward I'm now playing a ball back punch shot because the lies asking me to to get the most out of it bear in mind these balls are within what two foot of each other let's go back in my stance weight forward ball first ground second that's worked absolutely lovely now compared to this lie well, I feel like I just play this one like I would standard inside on the mat literally aim at the flag hit it straight there's a bit of wind but if i hit it well enough i should hold it very different heights same club two balls within two foot of each other but dynamically playing with that playing field for my ball position let's do some more Right, what about something like that? That's pretty buried. So if I was hacking out with a nine iron, a wedge, I'm gonna hit my 50. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna hit my 60 actually, plenty of loft. I can't play this shot from a normal ball position. I need my club not interacting with that grass. If I did my normal angle of attack from say a seven iron swing, I'm gonna be coming in and getting all this grass very much first. I want to be hitting much more down on the back of this ball. So again, ball back. But if I'm ball back and someone who tends to get, you know, a little scoopy from there and I can get more up in the air like I showed you inside, you might need to be more back, more hands forward and more weight forward than the next person. It's putting all those bits together. It's not just moving the ball. It's moving the ball and then matching up the other pieces. So for me, I'm quite a zero player if you like, so handle forward, wait for, ball back. This is one where I don't want to be getting much of any of this involved, and I can crack down on the back of this with a bit of speed. See if I can pop it in the air. So you can see how much down I was on that. The follow through was kind of next to nothing. Basically, with the angles I set up, I wanted everything going that way. Ball popped up fine, got it on the green. Again, dynamically having to change where I put that ball in the playing field to play golf. This isn't range golf, is it? How many of you, down in the comments, get in these kind of lies? I reckon a lot of you. So let's think of ball position as well with club path. There's a lot of golfers, I will tweak their ball position between those areas to try and move path. So the further back my ball goes, as, as default for me, my path moves more right. And as I move that ball more forward, it goes more left. Think about it. If I've got someone who wants to move their path more to the right, they hit from out to in. And we get a good swing fork going that reduces them down to one or two degrees out, if you like. I might then resort on a ball position change, just shift it that extra little couple of degrees to get the desired shot they want. Good players will be doing this on the course to use shaping of shots. You don't have to do that, but when you practice, you definitely should be thinking about, right, where does my driver go best from? Does it have to be on the left toe, in the heel, just inside the heel? What does it do to start direction? What does it do to shape? And do it with your driver, do it with your wood, do it with your irons. Play with it to try and manipulate that path, because it will, it will change path. And what you might find is that path changes over time. So your ideas of ball position will have to move with it. Again, it's the dynamicness. It's getting people away from thinking, oh, but I hit that one well, but is that right? That comment just doesn't, that one I see a lot. And to be honest with you, it worries me. If you hit target, with any level of consistency, within reason, as long as the ball is in a crazy position, hit target with consistency. Yeah, that's classed as being good. That's right. Right, ball. Low punch cut needed for me to hit the ball low. Again, we're going back in my stance, but I know it tends to draw when I put it back. So I'm going to choose here to defend, just chip out. 
or I'm going to put a swing on it that will try and move it left to right. And for me, as a more confident player, I'm going to try and move the ball. But for lots of players, it would be, look, when you put the ball back in your stance, it draws. You struggle to hit the cut with the ball back in your stance. Maybe something to work on, a new skill to develop. But why don't you just chip out for this shot? Would make some sense. I'm going to go for a five iron low cut stinger, obviously. Right, 170 yards, and I've got to get it up over these reeds quick and to try and make that distance. That's a six iron for me. Now I've got two balls. This one's lying all nice and fluffy. This one's on a bear lie. Now, when I put the ball forward in my stance, I feel like I've got leans in my upper body, so leaning back. This makes me bottom early and then start getting the, the impact more at zero, almost to one up. Ball in the air, sort of slightly fluffy lie. That's not a problem. That one would be. So the choices I would make between these two that one probably seven iron and just accept that I'm not going to make the distance and then hope for a chip and putt. This one in the fluffy lie, I'm going to go for it. But I know when I got the ball forward, catch it slightly lower on the face, fluffy lie is going to help with that. I will get a little bit more launch, but it tends to go a little bit less. So I can either choose to try and fight the left, feeling like I'm holding the face off. Or what I often will do is aim slightly down the right, just accept that I slightly pull these, plenty of speed, see if I can get it over the reeds. Oh, I caught them, but that is still getting up there. Just caught one of them, I think. Wouldn't even be trying that from the bare lie. I'd just have to accept my inability to get the ball up in the air with the strike to the angle of attack I want to get from that ball position. Again, playing within that playing field, even if it's going back, going forward, going in the same place. There's so many other factors that I'm working in, which makes this such a dynamic skill, which is why I want you all to stay as dynamic as you can with your ball position. Get out there practicing it, moving it around, seeing how it reacts, different lies, different winds, different heights, and seeing what plays best for you. You'll have your favorites and you'll have your ones you don't like as much. And you don't do them unless you have to. That's how you do course management. There you go, let me know what you think. I mean, I could have been out there all day and that ball position, like I say, would be playing within that playing field. And that's how I want you to think about it, more of a playing field, think that you can play with to get your best results. Getting golfers to be less rigid, to get away from the too much structure. And I see it so much, I see it with parents, I see it so much with Fanula. She knows the ball goes forward with less loft and back with more loft into the middle, but then she gets in different situations and she's not always thinking about moving that ball to get the ball starting up the left or the right. And I work with her on trying to get her to be more creative and understand the patterns, because I know it's a skill that then she can take forward into other swing movements, any swing changes, uh, you know, other conditions, all the many aspects that are gonna be thrown at you when you're out on a golf course. Ball position is definitely what's called a fundamental, but you can see from that, if you learn just the fundamental part, well, that video would have been less than a minute long, and you won't be that skilled when you get out from a links course to a parkland course, to going over things, under things, all the many little games that we have to play to make a score. So remember, two of these still up for grabs. Uh, winners will be chosen on Monday, two winners. If you're a subscriber of the channel, doesn't matter if you've been subscribed from day dot or you want to subscribe now because you want a chance to win these, hit that subscribe button and one of you or two of you lucky subscribers will be picking these up on Monday. Can't beat a bit of putt out. In the Ryder Cup colours, lovely. See you all tomorrow.